And there's some classical music that I really love, and there's others that I just don't get, and I don't think I will ever get, and I don't care if I ever get. Right. And, but there's other, but I feel like, okay, this should be mutual. There should be an understanding that in pop music, regardless of whether it's harmonically complicated or not, or whatever, there's a, an awful lot going on. Right. A lot of, a lot of a lot that gets communicated through means that are very different than in classical music. There's in, uh, or I'd take that Public Enemy record. There's so many layers and references of things going on that you can't break it down to just the words and say the words and the, the beat. The beat is made up of however many a stack of samples. samples in that record. Um, yeah, so it's, it's referencing all this other stuff in the culture, that particular record. Yeah, I, I, Questlove, I read in an interview, I think, you said that one of the, you, it was like an eye-opening moment for you when you heard It Takes a Nation of Millions for the first time, because it was like your parents' entire record collection. Yeah. Like was, all the music you heard just, found a home in one. And it's funny you mention that, because um, I'll say in the last, the last two years of uh, my, my uh, high school experience, like my father had, he wanted me to take uh, a, pla a path to classical music, either study at uh, Curtis Institute, um, like I got, I got accepted to Juilliard. He wanted me to, to, because he felt that again, if if you do classical music, then you'll be a better person, you know. And um, so breaking the news to him that I had a rap group. Was <laughs> <laughs> no, I I, I hid uh, I hid having a. a I think maybe the first three months that our first album, Organics, like my dad didn't know. Huh. It's like, <laughs> once I got a real record deal, like yeah. once I signed to, to Geffen for my second album, then right. I had to explain where all, the <laughs> where all my sneakers were coming from. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> but during, during the period in high school, um, it, it, it's, it's funny you say that, because I, I had a teacher who could who could speak both languages. And I remember when we first started studying uh, Stravinsky, like he took us to see, he, like the class trip was gonna see uh, uh, Rites of Spring. Mm -hmm. And he finally found a way to explain to us, at least on a, a parallel level. So he used Public Enemy's music and just, I mean, for those that aren't familiar with Public Enemy's music, uh, you know, they're, well, they're self-described. They wanted to be music's worst nightmare, mm. kind of the, the hip-hop version of the Sex Pistols, like just cramming in uh, dense samples, one on top of the other, till it just didn't sound like music anymore. It just sounded like a mess um, because, you know, 88 was a, a, that was the crack period of the ghetto. So they wanted their music to sort of give you that experience where, you know, this is what it's like in the inner city. So once, once they um, explained it to us, then we couldn't wait hmm. to see, you know, oh, Stravinsky, that's, that's like the public enemy of classical music. So, I mean, that really... <laughs> <laughs> How'd that turn out? That's, that's what reeled me in. No, yeah. I mean, but that's, that's what reeled me in and made it more appealing. So if anything, I think that... And that's what I hope I did yesterday for my class that's when cool. I finally got them to say that, okay, well, we, we do like this record now. So, I mean, if you, if you can find somebody who can somehow eloquently explain right. in terms that they can un understand, yeah. then there's a whole world of music that people can enjoy.